how are my designs? Or my designs? The notion of super soldiers enhanced with biotechnology and cybernetics was once only possible in the realm of science fiction. Popular mediums such as books, comics and movies such as The X-Men, Judge Dredd, Ghost in the Shell, Robocop, The Matrix have all explored the idea in some respect. But it may not be too long before these concepts become a reality. A new worldwide arms race is pitting countries against each other to be the first to successfully create real genetically modified super soldiers. Human enhancement technologies are being researched into ways in which we can change the very nature of us as humans and this has important impacts on soldiers and the ways in which we fight wars. Many of these human enhancement technologies raise health and safety questions and it is more likely these enhancements will first gain traction in countries or even terrorist groups that do not place as much weight on ethical concerns. Gene editing equipment has grown drastically cheaper and easier to use in recent years, and in countries without regulations, the ability to create genetic super soldiers could be within reach. According to US Intelligence Director John Radcliffe, China has conducted human testing on members of the People's Liberation Army in hope of developing soldiers with biologically enhanced capabilities. China is known to be engaged in experiments to boost the efficiency of soldiers in battle, and there is little evidence of exactly what Chinese research into enhancements has produced. Everything from implants that enable human wetware to interact with and share digital information with hardware, to gene editing through tools like CRISPR. Such work may one day allow China to grow superior troops, or turn regular soldiers into super soldiers. This has made the US military's top intelligence agencies increasingly worried that the Pentagon has sufficiently invested in its own research of extending the human senses beyond their current physical limitations to provide soldiers with superhuman abilities. The basics of brain-machine interfaces are being developed for the military, and if the results are successful, as the scientists hope they will be, soldiers could one day be enhanced with cybernetics, effectively becoming transhuman soldiers. The US military is also examining newly scientific tools like genetic engineering, brain chemistry and shrinking robotics for even more dramatic enhancements. Most of this advanced technology remains classified. You know, we want to find the most compelling use cases that we can find, the things that are most transformational, the things that will have the broadest application and the things that will lead to innovation in the space. And so there's a balance here that we're trying to achieve. On the one hand, we're working some very cutting edge AI technologies with consumers, some pretty mature consumers. On the other side of the coin, we have partnerships with really important enterprises and organizations who haven't even really started their journey into AI. And so we've got to make sure that we have the right balance of investment in high-tech AI that moves the state of the art and shows the pathway for additional AI development and implementation, and then also helping consumers you know, with their first forays into the AI environment. DARPA announced that it is building a brain computing interface for human soldiers to control AI with their neurons. According to DARPA, this opens up the possibility of controlling drone swarms and other new military machines, but the field of biological enhancements for the warfighter encompasses everything from dietary supplements and neural stimulation to bionic limbs and brain augmentation. The soldier of the future could have amazing superhuman capabilities. The ultimate warrior could be able to see in the dark, hear a conversation from across the world, and be able to leap over tall buildings. Imagine the technology implanted in a future soldier, using a brain-computer interface which could enable soldiers to carry less equipment by connecting them directly to drones overhead, or by allowing them to access the internet to instantly pull up intelligence, secure video feeds, or even weapon systems. In the future, we'll be taking the soldier out of combat situations and putting them in virtual reality environments. We'll be making increasing use of robotics. We will 
be incorporating nanotechnology and tiny robotic systems. We will be relying more and more on robust self-organizing communication systems. And all of that was really on the fringe of future capability. It was kind of a gleam in our eye. And today, there's really been a sea change in orientation and perspective, because that's very much the science and technology that we're creating now. And the process of going from these kind of conceptions to the reality in the battlefield is going to be greatly reduced. In fact, according to my models, we're doubling the paradigm shift rate every decade. As the human enhancement technology develops, the unpredictability of war will increase. This technology allows the brain to be accessed from afar. This means that soldiers can receive communication feedback or control of certain functions directly from a system that is remotely controlled by a computer. For example, the brain-computer interfaces can be used to enhance the human's cognitive capabilities in order to improve their judgment outcome based on the input it receives from sensors. Last injuries, burns and other wounds experienced by warfighters often catastrophically damage their bones, skin and nerves, resulting in months to years of recovery for the most severe injuries and often returning imperfect results. This long and limited healing process means prolonged pain and hardship for the patient and a drop in readiness for the military. However, DARPA believes that recent advances in biosensors, actuators and artificial intelligence could be extended and integrated to dramatically improve tissue regeneration. To achieve this, the new Bioelectronics for Tissue Regeneration program asks researchers to develop bioelectronics that closely track the progress and then stimulate healing processes in real time to optimize tissue repair and regeneration and dramatically reduce recovery time. DARPA hopes that this research will help make wounds less painful and more manageable. We have cognitive enhancements. These involve pharmaceuticals, brain stimulation, electronic brain stimulation and other means to reduce the need to sleep and increase the capacity to operate under stress. There's also some interest in changing nutrition and eating. Some of the more extreme examples of this are changing someone's stomach so that they can digest cellulose, which means that soldiers can eat grass. Sensors can be embedded firmly into implants and can measure pressure, temperature and electrical signals, among other data. Sensors have been used in breast cancer screenings, blood pressure monitoring and in catheters and pacemakers. Pre-programmed stimulating electronics can move the electrodes to precise locations for the stimulation process and help stimulate the correct healing signals. DARPA has researched these technologies and believes that they can be integrated into future bioelectronic sensor assemblies to extend the range of the technology and improve its applications in debilitating injuries to help soldiers and their families recover in a more efficient way. We're now building systems at the molecular level, and one of the key aspects of biology, that one of the key applications of, of this technology is in biology, to create small systems that are nano-engineered. And if, this, if it sounds very futuristic to put blood cell size devices in the bloodstream for therapeutic applications, I'd point out we are doing this already in animals. One scientist actually cured type 1 diabetes with a blood cell size device, tens of thousands of them in the bloodstream of these animals, and it, lets insulin out in a controlled fashion and blocks antibodies. At MIT, they have a blood cell size device that can detect specifically the antigens on the surface of cancer cells, latch onto the cell, burrow inside the cell, release toxins and destroy the cancer cell, and then destroy itself. It's a pretty elaborate device, and that's today. Billions of dollars and tens of thousands of hours of research and development have been invested into human enhancement technologies. The question still remains, is it ethical to even use them? Without human test subjects, this research would be impossible. Such biotechnology would be employed to enhance a select group of soldiers, who would then be deployed by their nations to conduct covert military operations. We're still a long way from the kind of capabilities required for doomsday scenarios, like super soldiers or genetically targeted biological weapons. A recent development suggests there's real danger of a new genetic arms race in the making. Thanks for watching. Did you like this video? Then show your support by subscribing, ringing the bell, and enabling notifications to never miss videos like this.